Hello YouTube, it's story time. This story, however, isn't based on imagination or fictitious events. This is this is an experience that actually happened to me oh probably about twenty years ago, thereabouts. I'm not sure of, of the exact date or anything, but um it happened up in the near the Superstition Mountains. If you're not familiar with the Superstition Mountains, uh, it's in Arizona in a small town called Apache Junction. Uh, I've, I've always grown up in the shadow of the Superstition Mountains in a small town, well, small back then, called Mesa. Um, it's in the valley of the Superstition Mountain Range. Uh, it was... I want to say early spring, maybe fall. I remember it was it was cold, but not real cold. Like in in the winter, um, me and a bunch of friends, we just on a whim decided that we were gonna go up to the mountain range, not up the mountain or anything. But there there's there's an area near there called the Salt River Recreation Site. And there's actually a couple of them. The specific one I'm talking about is near the Praying Hands. Uh, the Praying Hands is, uh, how do I put it? It's it's a feature at on on the Superstition Mountains on the north side um, that just looks like two praying hands. Uh, next to it is an area that they call the the witch, I believe, because it it, it kind of looks like a witch with her hat on. Anyways, um. We were at the Salt River Recreation Site. It was uh, it was cold. It was a moonless night, very dark. There was nobody else around, which was really nice because we wanted our privacy. You know, it was uh, me and my girl at the time, and another couple. Um, we we were totally unprepared. This was a, a completely spontaneous. You know, let's go out and and do stuff because. That's what people do when they're young. And this was you know, back when I was in my mid twenties. Um, so we we get there and we set up a campfire. We didn't have flashlights, anything. We were completely unprepared. Uh, I, I think we may have stopped for some hot dogs, and we were planning on roasting some hot dogs or something. But. I, I believe the main reason for the fire was so that we could see and kind of some ambiance, you know, kind of set the mood or whatever. Um, and it was cold. It was very cold, cold and dark. Um, now there's there's been a lot of stories about the Superstition Mountains. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them. You know, main ones being the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine about a, a, a they call him a Dutchman but I, I believe he was German um, evidently he found the mother lord of gold up in those mountains and uh, he ended up dying and leaving clues as to where this gold mine was people to this day are still looking for it and getting lost up in those mountains and some even dying never coming back uh, then there was the Peraltas, of a, a large family of silver miners that ended up getting murdered in in the Superstition Mountains. Of course, their silver mines were were in the Superstition Mountains. Um, also, it's a good thing to note that this this area is considered sacred land to the Apache Apache Indian tribe. Um, they don't go into why. And gold to them is useless, so they, they have no use for gold or silver. They don't know how to extract the the gold or the silver from the ore, so that stuff is useless to them. Uh, they had no, no desire for the mines at all, but they did not want the white man in those mountains. In fact, the Apaches seldom went into the mountains themselves. Um, anyways, back to my encounter. So we, we get our campfire set up and um, it, it wasn't 
very long at all. I'd say five to ten minutes when um, we started. We, we heard the first rock or stick or something thrown in our general direction. And, and I can't confirm that something was thrown, but we heard something that sounded like a rock or a stick being thrown near where we were camping out. And we, it was so dark we could not see 10 feet away from us. I'd say we couldn't even see 5 feet away from us. It was that dark. Even with the campfire going, we could not see very far at all. Um, none of us had flashlights. There's absolutely no lighting at the recreation site. Uh, so the first, the first time I know I heard it. I don't know if the others heard it. The girl I was with was hearing impaired, so she definitely did not hear it. Um, the first time I ignored it. The second time I, I got a little bit cautious about it, and I asked if anybody else heard that. And uh, my other male friend had said, yeah, I, I think I heard something, but the girls either didn't want to admit that they had heard anything or just didn't hear it. I'm, I'm sure the girl I was with didn't hear anything because, like I said, she was hearing impaired. She could hear, just not very well. She had hearing aids, and um, she wouldn't have been able to hear something like that. So this, this went on probably about three or four more times, and... As, as it progressed, I started getting more, you know, my spidey senses were tingling. Something something didn't seem right here. Um, but I figured it was just an animal or, you know, something. Then we started hearing the uh, crackling of branches. Um, like, we could hear something moving nearby. I would say maybe 20 feet away from us. Um, and it's also interesting to note that, well, not interesting to note, but something I need to note is we were right by the Salt River, and we could even hear the, excuse me, the water of the river, so that was kind of, you know, drowning out some of the noise. Um, there was no other noises like bugs, crickets, or birds, or, um, there you know, all we could hear, all I could hear, was the running water from the Salt River and whatever it was that I felt was approaching us. Um, the sounds got louder and louder, like it was getting closer and closer, and um, there, there was, there was some, some kind of grunting. I, I, I can't really describe it. Um, I'm familiar with much of the wildlife in the area. I know it wasn't coyotes or elk. Uh, elk are not common in the area at all. It would be very, very uncommon for something like a, a bear to be in the area. Um, but whatever this was, it sounded very large and I got the impression that it did not want us there. Um, I mentioned a couple of a couple of times to my my companions, you know, do you guys hear that too? And and of course the other two at that point, you know, because it was it was so loud and so close, it was obvious that there was something there. And um, the girl I was with, the hearing impaired one, she. She, uh, she was like, are you guys, are you guys fucking with me? And, you know, she thought that it was all a joke. And, and, you know, I, I had to confirm to her, you know, hey, I'm not joking. We, we need to, like, get up and get out of here right now. And, um, she was like, well, shouldn't we put the fire out? And I was like, no, we need to get out of here right now. And we left everything we brought with us which of course wasn't much, you know, hot dogs and a, a blanket or something, you know, we, like I said, this was a totally spontaneous thing, but we, we left everything, we left the fire, 
everything and we just got in the car and left and we did not talk about it um we just kind of you know never really never talked about it after that we just were so glad to be out of there um i didn't really think about it much but it's always kind of been in the back of my mind and and the reason i'm bringing this up is um because i've i've had some some thoughts as to what I think it may be and, and I was like no it can't be it, it, it's too hot in this area there is no way it can be a Sasquatch however after doing some research on the internet I found that other people have had encounters with what they claim was a Sasquatch in the Superstition Mountains um, and it was just by doing a quick Google search of, is it possible for a Sasquatch to live in the Superstition Mountains? And I was really surprised to hear that there were several encounters with what people call a Sasquatch. Um, personally, I think that it was a Sasquatch. I think that the Apaches know that it's a Sasquatch and they know to leave it alone and that's why they don't go there and why they want the white people and anybody else to stay away from there I don't think that the, the Apaches murdered the Peraltas I, I don't think that any of the mysterious disappearances or murders that have happened up there were, were the Apaches I, I believe that there, there, there is definitely something up in those mountains and it is not human, and it is not an animal. It is something in between. Um, I've never gone back to that exact spot. That exact spot. Uh, I've been by there several times. I, I, where I go to do my target practice is through that area. I have to travel through it. However, I don't stop there. Um, I hope that I never break down there. And, and see, the thing is, is this is a very popular recreation site, too. Um, so I was really surprised that there was no other people around. Anyways, um, check into it. Tell me what you think. You know, if you've had some kind of experiences up in the Superstition Mountains, let me know down there in the comments. Um, or if you have your own video, post a link in the comments. I'd like to hear more about it. Anyways, that's my experience. And thank you for watching. And please give me a like and subscribe.